All right, um, this is the tutorial um, that kind of tries to replicate what we did in assignments three and four for the over portion of this class. We're going to do this in Unity. So far, you know how to create an ocean, create a cube and make it move by changing its velocity, and then create more than one cube and um, do selection. So the selected cube moves not both at the same time or none of them. So now we're going to do orient physics. And there are several parts to this. So let's get started. We'll call this as three and four, and I'll call it underscore. It turns out you can, if you've already imported asset packages, you can do so when you create a project rather than have to do it after you created the project. And click on Create Project. Yes, I'd like to give Unity technology some access. And I have a better background screen now that tells you what I'm doing. Impatience while we wait. while it's loading, what we can do while it's loading is actually to kind of go over the steps. We're going to reproduce the first step, which is making an ocean. It should be old hand to us now. Then we're going to import some ship assets. Uh, we have some beautiful ships that we'll be putting in to Unity, and you'll see how easy it is to do so, and how easy it is to position them and things like that. We're going to make a skeleton entity manager because in Unity, you can kind of access everything in uh, the scene view and in the project view of the scene view. You don't really have to have a full-blown entity manager that helps you create entities and destroy them. We'll need them later, but for now, let's just have a skeleton entity manager that holds a list of entities. Uh, we'll need a selection manager so that we can do tab selection and then later on we'll also do mouse selection and group selection in there. We'll create something like Entity 381 class that we created in Ogre to hold data about ships, uh, about the entities, the movable entities that we have. And then we'll attach a 2D physics aspect that does the 2D physics stuff and then we'll go on. All right. So let's move here, um, start, and as you can see, we already have standard assets imported. Uh, we'll uh, go to the environment, and we want good looking water, so we'll go to the good looking water prefab and go from there. And for that, let's make a 3D object, not a cube. If you make something by mistake, go there, hit delete, and it's gone. An empty game object. We call it ocean, just like we did before. Uh, we should probably also create uh, an empty game object to hold all our entities. So we'll call it as uh, we did before. Um, then what do we need? Uh, we said we need the selection manager and other things, but for now, let's just work with these. So inside the ocean, we're going to put water for advanced. You can use what simple water. You can use whatever you like. It, uh, as long as it looks good, we're okay. Uh, and what we did was we scaled it, and I'm going to make large oceans. And, okay, it's 10,000 by 1,000, which is weird. There we go. Okay, so now we can hit play just to see what it looks like. And we have oceans for as far as the eye can see. Okay. All right. 
right, so I hit play, stop. There's a weird shimmer that I'm not sure of, but we'll deal with it later. I'll just say low quality from Alia and Gerstner. We have to do that. Okay. We have to deactivate Gerstner displays, otherwise you get this weird stuff. Um, so here's the main camera. What is it looking at? That's the view from the main camera, and I want to see the same view, so I'm going to kind of go back here and see what the main camera is seeing so that both kind of have the same view. All right, so now the view from the camera is very similar to the view you see down here, and we'll move it up because we really don't want it to be so close. Let me say negative 100, so it's kind of bad. Or maybe not 100, negative 50. Okay? And just to do some testing to see if we can see what we're supposed to see and um, uh, to test when we make entities that they're okay, I'm going to create a test game object and inside it I'm going to create a nice little cube and see if I can see it. For some reason, this wasn't reset, so let's. All right. Where's the cube? Okay, there it is. Half in, half out. Perfect. We'll make it kind of big like we did the other one. Okay. We're inside the cube, so we can't really see it. Now we're outside the cube, and we can see it. Right? Okay. So, um, and all we need to do to get rid of it is to do that. Let's go. All right. Can we see it here? No, we can't. So, maybe we need to go closer. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Okay, so now it's in view. Okay. So, we actually need it to be at 150 back. Oh no, what we need to do is also look down. So then, even if we are closer, we should be able to see it. Yeah. Alright, okay. All right. So now, when we put movable entities in, we should be able to see stuff. So where do we get movable entities from? It turns out, if we go here and get to Canvas, Right. We can log in and go to our class, inside our class, under files, we have Unity packages, and we'll go with civilian ships package or ship models. Let's start with ship models. Download. Downloading it. Let's switch back. And now we're going to import this package. It's a custom package that we made. This is what we downloaded today. Apparently I've been downloading it quite often, so I have a lot of it. But this is the one that was today. Uh, and uh, I'm working at night. Also select that. Open it. It's got DDG 51 and it's got a tugboat. All right, let's import it. All right, it's finished importing. That means, and you can see there's a new folder. And if you look inside it, you can see models and prefabs. And if you look inside, you can see prefab. Let's see uh, what this might look like. So um, we'll get rid of the cube and instead put the DDG51 in test. Huh? Where is it? Huh? It's there. I think that's it. It's really small. Might be, you know, DDG51 is 100 meters, right? How big is the DDG51? Um, 
TTG 51 Blank. Oh wow. 505 feet. That's more than 100 meters. Interesting. Maybe Wikipedia or something. Let's check out Wikipedia. So 20 meters, 154 meters in length. All right. 20 meters in width. Okay. So what I need to do is make my cube, make it 150 four meters in length, 20 meters in width. Right. And let's just make it very small. So let's have low. Right. And that's the size this thing needs to be. Okay, so this is not right. So what I need to do is, in here, I'm going to make a empty 3D object. Call it TDG51. And you'll see why. Move this guy in here. And then, let's see. Let's, okay, why are you at 0 0.99? Let's just do that, okay. All right. And then, are we all zero, zero, zero all the way? You don't have to reset anything. Okay, let's scale this. This looks like it's really small. Let's scale it by evenly. Oh, there we go, 100 times. And if you look at it, And if you look at it, you can see it fits that cube in length and width really well. So that means it's the right scale. So it's 100 times smaller. So we'll leave it here and go on from here. Okay. Now move entity. Uh, get it a cube now. I don't need it there for testing. And we might have to do the same thing with a tugboat. So let's get the tugboat in. Okay, how am I going to see this? Well, let's move this guy. Uh, let's move it. Around. Okay, move it to the side. Uh, where is the tugboat? Okay, it's really small. Jeez. We have to do the same kind of a thing. So what we're going to do is create... I think we might want to do this for every game object that we input. Tug boat, and we'll put you over here. And then here, I want to make you 100, 100, 100. Okay, and there we go. That looks that looks really good. Oh, that's a nice looking tug. That is a very nice looking tug boat. It's a squat little boat that might need to go in the water a little bit lower right it's only a little bit lower so we can do all these transforms over here i'm not sure why it's this way so we'll put you there okay and then we'll lower you a little bit oh that's too much that looks about right like the propeller and stuff is under the water the rest of it is on top, okay. Looks about right. Oh yeah, that thing's broke. So you can see underneath the water, the propellers of the DG-50. One, and the part of the bow that bulges out to make it more aerodynamic, water dynamic. Okay, so we've got two beautiful ship models in here. Right. And 
you can see the detail level of detail on this thing. So this is the nice property of the interactivity that you can do with Unity. Okay, so we have these two entities and um, we don't need the cube anymore, but we'll leave the test in here for other stuff. Okay, so now what are we supposed to do? We're going to make uh, kind of an entity manager and a selection manager. All right. So let's make uh, let's make an empty game object, call it managers, and put all the managers inside this one. We'll put it over here so it's kind of not, you know, um, at the very bottom. The very bottom will leave for testing. To create a entity manager, we call it an entity MGR and attach a script. The script will be called entity MGR. And if we do this, we know that it has a tick. It's a any script inherits from mono behavior and mono behaviors have a wake, start and update. Perfect. We don't really want it to do anything right now. We are just going to We are just going to make public we need a list of game objects, so I'm gonna say list game object entities. Okay. And as soon as I did that you saw that go from this darker gray to a light one because list is defined in system.collections.generic. We make it a public list. Okay, so if we do that, we wait for it to compile, we can see it, and then we can say currently it's a list of size two, and we'll move this to be our first, and this to be our second. Okay. All right. Um, hmm. So now um, we need to do a selection manager so we can select between the two and then we'll attach some physics to it to let it move. Um, if we're going to do a selection manager, we need to create a selection manager. We'll call it selection manager. And you can see it's there. We'll add a script to it. And this is the selection manager script. Okay. And we'll edit it. And we'll define a function that deals with uh, tab selection. So what we're going to say is if we're going to use stuff from the input manager, which gives us keystrokes, uh, get key up, which we realized is a much better way of doing keyboard without the uh, very rapid toggling that can happen. Key code dot tab, right? We want to do tab selection. And what happens? We call select next entity. And if we are going to implement select next entity, we'll make it a public void 
function okay so what should we do when we select the next entity well we have to do several things we need to know what the current entity's index is we need a number so we're going to have a public int selected entity index and we're going to need to know who is the currently selected entity and we're going to say public game object and selected entity okay now what should select next thing do it should say uh, selected entity equals and this is my favorite syntax for assigning the result of an if then else statement is selected entity index uh, greater than uh, well I need to know how many entities there are where are all my entities they're in the in the entity manager so I need access to the entity manager when it gets created right now the entity manager is not it's only when I press play that it's going to be created and then I'll have access to its numbers but then I need a I need a way to get to it well one way of doing that is to say all right uh, let's say I have public I'm putting it over here just because mm, it's kind of uh, I'm putting it at the beginning for and let's say entity manager I'm putting it at the beginning because it's a manager and I think it's a bunch of things that should go at the very beginning um, and I'm calling it uh, entity manager uh, which might not be the best thing to do let's call it lowercase entity manager that keeps us with our convention of lowercase start for variable names and uppercase start for method names all right and if I do that then I can go over here and wait for it to come out no. selection manager Hey, where did I put that? I didn't save it. Save it. Go back. Oh, that's a problem. Oh, I haven't finished, so let me worry about this later. Go back. Compile. Okay, so now I have the slot for the entity manager, and I can do this. And then I'll have access to the entity manager when I'm ready so yay so at this point i can uncomment this and say entity manager dot entities what do we call it entities there we go right but this is not the best way do this what you want you want global access so what we'll do is this we'll say we'll do it a little bit different way for all managers um, in 381 in ogre when we created our engine we accessed all the managers to the engine in this case unity is the engine so how do we access all the managers well if we follow the convention that every manager has a static member variable called inst, short for instance, and we 
initialize in awake, which gets called before start. And one of the first things that's called when a mono behavior is created and starts running, if we do this, then because this thing is static, in selection manager, we can say entity manager dot inst dot entities. Return zero, otherwise return uh, Otherwise, return selected entity index plus one. Okay, this should be selected entity index. This is still wrong because if it gets to selected entity index, if selected entity index gets all the way up to count, that means it's past the end of the array. It's actually greater than that. Return zero otherwise. Okay. And then we say uh, selected entity equals uh, entity manager dot ends dot entities and list elements can be accessed like an array. Which um, ends here. Okay. And then what do we do with the select entity? We gotta put some indicator on it. Uh, well, we have to tell the entity that it's been selected. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, in the previous tutorial, we set a variable called is selected to true. We don't have that because our entities have nothing. Right now, our movable entities have nothing. Hmm. I think we need to change this. So before we can implement anything more, we will need to start uh, adding some data to entities. And hey, what happened? Is this a problem? No, it doesn't say there's a problem. All right. Why was it doing that? Okay. Compile, compile. Okay, it's not. So what we will do is we'll add a component script and we'll call it entity data. No, let's just call it entity 381, right? Uh, well, uh, yeah, let's just call it entity 381 to make it clear that this is very much like what we used to have that we called entity 381. And let's edit it. And what do we need to put in here? Well, some of this data. Well, first, public boolean is selected equals false. No one shall it. We probably need to worry about velocity public vector three position public vector three velocity. Don't we need to worry about speed, public, float speed, public, float desired speed, public, float heading, oops, public, float desired heading, public, Float acceleration, public float turn rate. What else do we need in here? Hmm, I'm not sure. Um, we'll add to it as we go. Save it, go back, and we should see all those public variables go, and we can say, oh, um, everything is zero for now. 
how fast does the GG accelerate? Let's say five. For now, we're doing meters per second, so we'll say five. And how fast does it turn? We'll say five degrees a second. Okay. And we probably need a max speed and an end speed for both of them. So we'll put those kind of separate. Public max speed. Oh, that's wrong. Float max speed and public float min speed. Well, you know, we should kind of separate these from these. Why? Because the variables above variables above that dividing line change all the time. They're, they keep changing. So variables below uh, don't change. Say these are variables, values that change while running. Okay, and that's just decorations to make things clear to someone who's reading the code. It doesn't make any change over here. What's the max speed of a DDG? Let's see. Um, work. Speed greater than 30 knots. 30 knots, 35 miles per hour. So let's say 30 knots, 2 meters per second, 15.433. All right. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. What I meant to do was to say 15.4, and min speed will say is zero. We won't give it. We won't give these ships the ability to go backwards yet. Yeah, any information on turn rate? I wonder. see a lot of information on turn rates or moment and stuff like that as usual but no all right let's get back to work okay so now that we have all this um what's the smallest physics thing okay let's let's do selection and see if this changes when we press tab so we can finish selection and say um Selected entity dot is select. Oh, okay. So the problem here is we don't have access to the data because selected entity is a game object. What we need to do is to say that it is an entity 381. And then we can do is selected equals true. We actually have to um, and now this is giving an error because here here oops here we said that it's a list of game objects. So just let's make it a list of the data component, the entity 381 component of game objects. Okay, right? So let's 
go back. We have issues all over the place. So first, this won't work. Right, and this isn't even compiling. Where's the problem here? I haven't saved it, so this has got issues. So now let's see. Okay. So it's supposed to be an entity 381, but if we drag this over, because it contains an entity 381, it'll take that component and oh, this one doesn't have anything yet. Right? Then we can't do that. So what do we need to do here? We go here, we add. Okay, there it is, entity 381, and we've got it. Um Max speed for a tug. What's max speed for a tug? Tug. But well, let's say harbor tug. see a lot of information on speeds okay that looks very much like <laughs> the tractor tug okay that looks very much like the boat we have do we have speeds and things um, It's not what we are looking for. I'm going to find this big boat, big engine, but it has to move a lot of stuff. Okay, so we're going to say its speed is, I'm going to take a I'm going to use information from my research to say its max speed is going to be about, let's say, uh, 8 meters per second, or let's convert. So uh, if this thing is 30 knots, let's say this thing can go to max of 15 knots, and we'll have 7.7, .7, let's say 8. Max speed is 8. Acceleration, it probably doesn't accelerate very fast, so we'll say at two. And turn rate, it's supposed to be really highly maneuverable, so we're gonna say very, very quickly maneuverable. All right. And so, okay, so that's done. So now we can say, go here. And now because it contains that component, we're able to drop it there. This scene has to be saved. Control S, that scene is saved, and we can play. But let's go back to the selection manager and make sure we complete it. So we're setting it to be true, but we have to unselect everything we selected before. So, uh, put, uh, let's see, unselect, I guess we should do unselect all. I think that's probably the best way to do it. Our convention is um, that it's camel cased. So uh, we'll just say avoid unselect all. And what does it do? For each entity 381 ant in uh, entity manager dot inst dot um, entities, no, entities, we basically want to say ant dot is selected equals false. All right. I love these kinds of loops. Hmm. Hmm, this one is true and we should be good to go. And this should start with zero. Right, and entry 381, I'm going to say this position equals 
vector 3.0 equals vector 3.0 Right, nothing is happening during update, nothing is happening during start. Okay, what do we want to test? Does selection work? How will we be able to test it? Uh, when we press play and press tab in the selection manager, it's going to get the key code and run this code, which means it will do this do this okay so we'll start with nothing selected no right now it says entity index 0 is selected so we should start out uh, by saying that you are selected because you are at index 0 that way we have uh, a good correspondence between the two okay and then um, selected entity is currently null or should we set it to something okay so if we say selected entity where's the selection there we go. there's nothing there so we can say this is the currently selected entity at entity if we set this up this way, we have to have our code assumes that we have at least one entity and that selection manager selected entity index is zero and that selected entity is at position zero in the entity manager's list of entities. So several assumptions that have to be true for this code to work. But for now, I think these are reasonable assumptions to make. As long as we know that those are our assumptions and we can go with it all right so um, save all this did I save everything here I think I saved here so if I press play and I look at this I see this is selected if I look at this I see it's not if I press tab I sh this should become selected and this should become not selected all right, so three, two, one, tab. No, it's not working. Well, um, perhaps I should press move my cursor here and then press tab. Okay, yeah, that's the problem. Um, so I was mucking about in these windows, the focus was not here. So when I moved my focus here, then it worked. So if I go back here, it's not selected. Now if I press tab again, this should be selected. So let me put my cursor here, press to bring the focus here, and then three, two, one, tab. Uh-oh, did not get, something went wrong. Something went wrong. Something's wrong in my code. All right. So what's the problem? If it's greater than or equal to, then this will work. All right. Because um, if you're already at the last index that's valid, which is entity this minus one, then you need when you try to increment this return zero because that's the next number if you're not there you should be returning plus one okay so let's go back compiled clear all right and then play and put the focus on tugboat go back left click and then get ready to press tab three two one tab okay then if I look at DDG 51, it's been unselected. This one is selected, so that's good. And you can see that, you know, things are moving back and forth depending. Okay, so then go back to put the focus here. And now if I go here and press tab after putting the focus back in this window, I should get
get is selected true to pop up over here. So tab, all right, and this is unselected. So if I press tab, I keep selecting and unselecting the tugboat. Okay, this seems to work well. Okay, I just don't have a good indicator for who's been selected. I need to add a decoration. Um, I guess I could put a cube under them like I did, uh, or a cylinder under them like I did with the movable entities, but uh, let's hold off for that for now. We'll put it in there later. Cool. All right. So yay. Everything is working. Um, let's go on to the next step.